to sleep. We've been reading the book of Ezekiel. It's been amazing. Uh, we last left off at Ezekiel chapter 23, and that's where we're going to begin this evening. If this is your first time, please click uh, subscribe and like the video and let others know about it and welcome. And if you've been on this journey with me for a while now, well, welcome back. <laughs> and I hope that you continue to enjoy. I hope you all enjoy and I hope that it helps you to relax. So without further ado, lay back, relax, close your eyes and go back to the basics of life, which I call breathing. Focus on each breath as you relax yourself. Focus on your inhalation and exhalation. Inhale and exhale. with her, defiling her in the bed of love. After being defiled, 
however, she rejected them in disgust. In the same way, I became disgusted with Oliva and rejected her, just as I had rejected her sister, because she flaunted herself before them and gave herself to satisfy their lusts. Yet she turned to even greater prostitution, remembering her youth when she was a prostitute in Egypt. She lusted after lovers with genitals as large as a donkey's and emissions like those of a horse. And so Oliba, who relived your former days as a young girl in Egypt, when you first allowed your breast to be fondled. Therefore, Oliba, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will send your lovers against you from every direction, those very nations from which you turned away in disgust from the Babylonians will come for the Babylonians will come with all the Chaldeans from Pekad and Shoah and Koa, and all the Assyrians will come with them, handsome young captains, commanders, chariot officers, and other high-ranking officers, all riding their horses. They will all come against you from the north with chariots, wagons, and a great army prepared for attack. They will take up positions on every side, surrounding you with men armed with shields and helmets, and I will hand you over to them for punishment so they can do with you as they please. I will turn my jealous anger against you, and they will deal harshly with you. They will cut off your nose and ears, and any survivors will then be slaughtered by the sword. Your children will be taken away as captives, and everything that is left will be buried burned. They will strip you of your beautiful clothes and jewels. In this way, I will put a stop to the lewdness and prostitution you brought from Egypt. You will never again cast longing eyes on those things or fondly remember your time in Egypt. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will surely hand you over to your enemies to those you loathe, those you rejected, they will treat you with hatred and rob you of all your own, leaving, leaving you stark naked. The shame of your prostitution will be exposed to all the world. You brought all this on yourself by prostituting yourself to other nations, defiling yourself with all their idols, because you have followed in your sister's footsteps. I will force you to drink the same cup of terror she drank. Yes, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. You will drink from your sister's cup of terror, a cup that is large and deep. It is filled to the brim with scorn and derision. Drunkenness and anguish will fill you, for your cup is filled to the brim with distress and desolation. The same cup your sister Samaria drank. You will drain that cup of terror to the very bottom, then you will smash it to pieces and beat your breast in anguish. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken, and because you have forgotten me, turned your back on me, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, you must bear the consequences of all your lewdness and prostitution. The Lord said to me, Son of man, you must accuse Ahola and Ola Oliba of all their detestable sins. They have committed both adultery and murder, adultery by worshiping idols and murder by burning as sacrifices the children they bore to me. Furthermore, they have defiled my temple and violated my Sabbath day on the very day that they sacrificed their children to their idols, they boldly came into my temple to worship. They came in and defiled my house. Your sisters sent messengers to distant lands to get men. Then when they arrived, you bathed yourself, painted your eyelids, and put on your finest jewels for them. You sat with them on a beautifully embroidered couch and put my incense and my special oil on a table that was spread before you. From your room came the sound of many men carousing. 
they were lustful men and drunkards from the wilderness who put bracelets on your wrists and beautiful crowns on your heads. Then I said, if they really want to have sex with old, worn-out prostitutes like these, let them. And that is what they did. They had sex with Ohola and Oliva, these shameless prostitutes. But righteous people will judge these sister cities for what they really are, adulterers and murderers. Now this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Bring an army against them and hand them over to the terrorized and plundered, for their enemies will stone them and kill them with swords. They will butcher their sons and daughters and burn their homes. In this way, I will put an end to lewdness and idolatry in the land, and my judgment will be a warning to all women not to follow your wicked examples. You will be fully repaid for all your prostitution, your worship of idols. Yes, you will suffer the full penalty. Then you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. Ezekiel chapter 24 On January 15, during the ninth year of King Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim's captivity, this message came to me from the Lord, Son of Man, write down today's date, because on this day the King of Babylon is beginning his attack against Jerusalem. Then give these rebels an illustration with this message from the Sovereign Lord. Put a pot on the fire and pour in some water. Fill it with choice pieces of meat, the rump and the shoulder and all the most tender cuts. Use only the best sheep from the flock and heap fuel on the fire beneath the pot. Bring the pot to a boil and cook the bones along with the meat. Now, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits Jerusalem, the city of murderers? She is cooking. She is a cooking pot whose corruption can't be cleaned out. Take the meat out in random order, for no piece is better than another, for the blood of her murders is splashed on the rocks. It isn't even spilled on the ground where the dust could cover it. So I will splash her blood on a rock for all to see, an expression of my anger and vengeance against her. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, what sorrow awaits Jerusalem, the city of murderers. I myself will pile up the fuel beneath her. Yes, heap on the wood. Let the fire roar to make the pot boil. Cook the meat with many spices and afterward burn the bones. Now set the empty pot on the coals. Heat it red hot. Burn away the filth and corruption. But it's hopeless. The corruption can't be cleaned out, so throw it into the fire. Your impurity is, is your lewdness and the corruption of your idolatry. I tried to cleanse you, but you refused. So now you will remain in your filth until my fury against you has been satisfied. I, the Lord, have spoken. The time has come and I won't hold back. I will not change my mind, and I will have no pity on you. You will be judged on the basis of all your wicked actions, says the Sovereign Lord. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, with one blow I will take away your, dear, dear, your dearest treasure. Yet you must not show any sorrow at her death. Do not weep, let there be no tears. Groan silently, but let there be no wailing at their grave. Do not uncover your head or take off your sandals. Do not perform the usual rituals of mourning or accept any food brought to you by consoling friends. So I proclaimed, this is the people the next morning. And in the evening, my wife died. So let me read that again. It says, so I proclaim this to the people the next morning, and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did everything I had been told to do. Then the people asked, 
what does this all mean? What are you trying to tell us? So I said to them, a message came to me from the Lord, and I was told to give this message to the people of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will defile my temple, the source of your security. And pride, the place your heart delights in, your sons and daughters whom you left behind in Judah will be slaughtered by the sword. Then you will do as Ezekiel has done. You will not mourn in public or console yourselves by eating the food brought by friends. Your heads will remain covered and your sandals will not be taken off. You will not mourn or weep, but you will waste away because of your sins. You will groan among you will groan among yourselves for all the evil you have done. Ezekiel is an example for you. You will do just as he has done, and when that time comes, you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, on the day I take away their stronghold, their joy and glory, their heart's desire, their dearest treasure, I will also take away their sons and daughters. And on that day, a survivor from Jerusalem will come to you in Babylon and tell you what has happened. And when he arrives, your voice will suddenly return so you can talk to him and you will be a symbol for these people. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 25 <clears throat> Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn and face the land of Ammon and prophesy against its people. Give the Ammonites this message from the Sovereign Lord. Hear the word of the Sovereign Lord. Because you cheered when my temple was defiled, mocked Israel in her desolation and laughed at Judah as she went away into exile. I will allow nomads from the eastern deserts to overrun your country. They will set up their camps among you and pitch their tents on your land. They will harvest all your trust and drink the milk from your livestock. And I will turn the city of Rabbah into a pasture for camels and all the land of the Ammonites into a resting place for sheep and goats. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you clapped and danced and cheered with glee at the destruction of my people, I will raise my fist of judgment against you. I will give you as plunder to many nations. I will cut you off from being a nation and destroy you completely. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because the people of Moab have said that Judah is just like all the other nations, I will open up their eastern flank and wipe out their glorious frontier towns. Beth, Sh Beth Jeshemoth, Baal, Meon, and Kiriathiam, 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 those are really difficult. And I will hand Moab over to nomads from the eastern deserts, just as I handed over Ammon. Yes, the Ammonites will no longer be counted among the nations. In the same way, I will bring my judgment down on the Mo Moabites, when they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The people of Edom have sinned greatly by avenging themselves against the people of Judah. Therefore, says the Sovereign Lord, I will raise my fist of judgment against Edom. I will wipe out its people and animals with the sword. I will make a wasteland of everything from Timon to Dedan. I will accomplish this by the hand of my people of Israel. They will carry out my vengeance with anger, and Edom will know that this vengeance is from me. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The people of Philistia have acted against Judah out of bitter revenge and long-standing contempt. Therefore, 
This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will raise my fist of judgment against the land of the Philistines. I will wipe out the Ker I will wipe out the Kerithites and utterly destroy the people who live by the sea. I will execute terrible vengeance against them to punish them for what they have done. And when I have inflicted my revenge, they will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 26 On February 3rd, during the 12th year of King Jehoiachin I think it's it's pronounced King Jehoiachin Jehoiachin Okay, but uh, some people say Jehoiachin So, let's, let's begin again on February 3rd, during the 12th year of King Jehoiachin, captivity, his captivity, this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, Tyre has rejoiced over the fall. Over the fall of Jerusalem, saying, Ha! Ah, she who was the gateway to the rich trade routes to the east has been broken, and I am the heir. Because she has been made desolate, I will become wealthy. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am your enemy, O Tyre, and I will bring many nations against you, like the waves of the sea crashing against your shoreline. They will destroy the walls of Tyre and tear down its towers. I will scrape away its soil and make it bare rock. It will be just a rock in the sea, a place for fishermen to spread their nets. For I have spoken, says the Sovereign Lord. Tyre will become the prey of many nations, and its mainland villages will be destroyed by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. From the north I will bring King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon against Tyre. He is king of kings and Step down 
from their thrones and take off their royal robes and beautiful clothing. They will sit on the ground trembling with horror at your destruction. Then they will wail for you singing this funeral song. O oh, famous island city, once ruler of the sea, how you have been destroyed. Your people with their naval power once spread fear around the world. Now the coastlands tremble at your fall. The islands are dismayed as you disappear. This is what the sovereign lord says. I will make Tyre an uninhabited ruin. Like many others, I will bury you beneath the terrible waves of enemy attack. Great seas will swallow you. I will send you to the pit to join those who descended there long ago. Your city will be your city will lie in ruins, buried beneath the earth, like those in the pit who have entered the world of the dead. You will have no place of respect. Here in the land of the living, I will bring you to a terrible end, and you will exist no more. You will be looked for, but you will never again be found. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Powerful. Ezekiel chapter 27. Then this message came to me from the Lord, son of man, sang a funeral song for Tyre, that mighty gateway to the sea, the, tra the trading center of the world. Give Tyre this message from the sovereign Lord. You boasted, O Tyre. My beauty is perfect. You extended your boundaries into the sea. Your builders made your beauty perfect. You were like a great ship built of the finest cypress from Zanir. They took a cedar from Lebanon to make a mast for you. They carved your oars from the oaks of Bashan. Your deck of pine from the coasts of Cyprus was inlaid with ivory. Your sails were made of Egypt's finest linen, and they flew as a banner above you. You stood beneath blue and purple awnings made bright with dyes from the coast of Alicia. Your oarsmen came from Sidon and Arvad. Your helmsmen were skilled men from Tyre itself. Wise old craftsmen from Gabal did the caulking. Ships from every land came with goods to barter for your trade. Men from distant Persia, Lydia, and Libya served in your great army. They hung their shields and helmets on your walls, giving you great honor. Men from Arvad and Halak stood on the walls on your walls. Your towers were manned by men from Gamad. Their shields hung on your walls, completing your beauty. Tarshish sent merchants to buy your wares in exchange for silver, iron, tin, and lead. Merchants from Greece to Baal and Meshach brought the slaves and articles of bronze to trade with you. From Beth to Garma came riding horses, chariot horses, and mules, all in exchange for your goods. Merchants came to you from the Don. Numerous coastlands were your captive markets. They brought payment in ivory tusks and ebony wood. Syria sent merchants to buy your rich variety of goods. They traded turquoise, purple dyes, embroidery, fine linen, and jewelry, and jewelry of coral and rubies. Judah and Israel traded for your wares, offering wheat from Minith, figs, honey, olive oil, and balm. Damascus sent merchants to buy your rich variety of goods, bringing wine from Elban and and white wool from Sahar. Greeks from Usal came to trade for your merchandise, wrought iron, Kazia and fragrant calamus were bartered for your wares. Dedan sent merchants to trade their expensive saddle blankets with you. The Arabians and the princes of Kedar 
sent merchants to trade lambs and rams and male goats in exchange for your goods. The merchants of Sheba, Rama, came with all kinds of spices, jewels, and gold in exchange for your wares. Haran, Kane, Eden, Sheba, Ashur, and Kilmad came with their merchandise too. They brought choice fabrics to trade, blue cloth, embroidery, and multicolored carpets rolled up and bound with cords. The ships of Tarshish were your ocean caravans. Your island warehouse was filled to the brim. But look, your oarsmen have taken you into stormy seas. A mighty eastern gale has wrecked you in the heart of the sea. Everything is lost, your riches and wares, your sailors and pilots, your shipbuilders, merchants and warriors. On the day of your ruin, everyone on board sinks into the depths of the sea. Your cities by the sea tremble as your pilots cry out in terror. All the oarsmen abandon their ships, the sailors and pilots stand on the shore. They cry aloud over you and weep bitterly. They throw dust on their heads and roll in the ashes. They shave their heads in grief for you and dress themselves in burlap. They weep for you with bitter anguish and deep mourning. As they wail and mourn over you, they sing this sad funeral song. Was there ever such a city as Tyre, now silent at the bottom of the sea? The merchandise you trade has satisfied the desires of many nations. Kings at the ends of the earth were enriched by your trade. Now you are a wrecked ship, broken at the bottom of the sea. All your merchandise and crew have gone down with you. All who live along the coastlands are appalled at your terrible fate. Their kings are filled with horror and look on with twisted faces. The merchants among the nations shake their heads at the sight of you. For you have come to a horrible end and will exist no more. Wow. never and will never play second fiddle to anything or anyone and it's important it's quite important that we recognize this and that we submit to God's sovereign authority well I enjoyed this and um I love reading scripture and I uh, definitely love reading to you. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it relaxed you. Um, and I hope that some of you maybe fell asleep already. <laughs> so without uh, further ado, um, I would be, bid you a farewell for now. Uh, next time we get together, we will begin with Ezekiel chapter 28. Until next time, may God bless you. God keep you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.